the antibody tests, I know I was watching Chris, Chris Cuomo go through his bout with COVID-19, and I know um, we've had several people in our, in our circle that have had it, and the antibody tests, um, how accurate are they? Will, you know, if you, if you take an antibody test and it shows that you had it, are you now immune? Can you break that down for us, Dr. Hervé? Yep. Yeah, so when you do tests, you're looking for um, accuracy and reliability. So accuracy would be, is it actually testing what you want it to test? And reliability is, every time I give this test, am I going to get the same results back? Like, am I actually going to do that reproducible? So within those two things, you're going to look at specificity and sensitivity. Sensitivity is the amount of false negatives, right? So that's going to really be real important for us. So how sensitive is it, right? If I ask you and if I test you and then the test says that it's negative when you were actually positive, it's not that sensitive of a test. It's no good, right? And then we also have the false positives, which is specificity is I test you and it says that you're positive when you're actually negative. What happens there? That's not good either because I then start treating, I could then start treating you and doing things that, you don't belong, you don't deserve to have done to you, right? So, but what we're really most interested in this is the false negatives, the sensitivity. Some of these antibody tests have a sensitivity as low as 70%. So that means, you know, three out of 10 people who take that test can get a false negative. And those, we're talking about the rapid, the, uh, the um, IgG, right? So the rapid the antibody test. Because the other tests, the swabs, which are PCR tests, they don't test for your body's reaction, which is what the antibody test, the antibody test tests your body's reaction, whether your body says, yes, I've had this, or your body is saying, yes, I have this right now. What the PCR tests or the swabs tell you is whether or not there's viral particles being shed either you know, by your nose, this is where the swab be, or your eyes or your, or your mouth, right? It tells you that it's there, now, whether you have an active infection or not, it's not, but it's there, right? So those things have a range of so many um, elements involved in that. The person that's administering the swab, whether or not they are good enough in their technique to get enough of a sample, right? That, that could ruin it right there. If they do a bad job, you're not getting a good sample from that. And then mm-hmm. there's the, the, the test itself from the laboratory, um, if that's, good or not, right? And then it's the person. How much virus did you have at the time? Could have been early on in the course or late in the course and you don't have a lot, you didn't pick up enough. So those those can vary. You hear some studies about people saying the 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 um the rapid test, the antibody test, uh are as high as ninety five percent. I find that dubious. That would be really hard, right? That'd be a really good test. Most of them, as a matter of fact, they gave what's called the EUA um, if you read that, it's called it's a emergency use authorization, the FDA. It's given in uh, April for a number of manufacturers for those, which means we're going to let you use these things before we've completed, completely vetted it. Then it came back we was like, hold on, right? These things are not that good. We're not giving out any more of those. So I would say if you do get a false negative, if you do get a negative on the test, don't take that as like I'm free and clear. I will continue to cover myself up. And remember, that's just a snapshot. That's the other thing. That's that period of time. If you do an antibody test, you don't know if, A, those antibodies are at sufficient levels to provide you protection from reinfection. We don't know that, right? We get hepatitis uh, vaccines, right? And then they'll tell you you need a booster for that because your antibodies are low. So we don't know if the antibodies you have are sufficient enough. And if they're sufficient enough, we don't know how long they last. It's the other thing. So it's only for that period of time. So if you want to make decisions, you have to make, you have to, you know, understand that you've only got like a click, click right then and there. This is the answer. I can't tell you about next week. So what's the point of getting tested? Eight six six eight zero one eight two five five. We have Dr. Hervé Damas in the in the house. Larry Daniel Favors is here as well. It's Wellness Wednesday. Why even get tested if you feel okay? There's no cure. If you go out, you're going to wear a mask to protect other people just in case, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to wash your hands. You're going to go through all of those things. What's the point in getting tested? Because even if you have the antibodies, it doesn't mean that you're immune to it. Doesn't mean that you, yeah, no you know, and even if you are immune to it, 
doesn't mean that you still should not protect yourself and other yeah. people, right? So yeah. why, why even get a test, Doc? All right, because the information that you can get from that test can be used for a number of things. A, to answer some of these questions, right? I get tested and I come out negative. Let's say you get tested and you come out I'm negative. I'm coming out negative, right? right. <laughs> you, get, you come Speak out negative, down. right? And we have these antibody tests, right? We say on this date, we were both negative. And then for some reason or another, a month later, I come down you know, with COVID symptoms, we can look back and say, okay, where was the break in that? Was it because the test wasn't reliable? Right? That could be information that we use. Is it because maybe those antibodies weren't, you know, maybe the month is, it's, it's a month. If you test negative, you know, and the antibodies say, maybe you got a month window, right? So that data, the more data that you have, the better off you are because you can start making this stuff. And then you also know the amount of caution that you need to take. For example, if you live with people and you don't know whether or not you're positive and you come back with a positive test, right? Now you got to isolate yourself from those people completely. And before you may have been interacting. So it allows you to make even more informed decisions on how you're going to live your life, how to interact. You know, knowledge is power. Staying in the darkness is never good. You know, the more information you got, the better it is.